the field set configurator open. Basically what we can do is work down the menu structure. The overview just gives an idea with our, what our scanner is doing. We are offline so we're not going to see much information here. Network settings, very similar. The IP address that we've already given the device is there. And really where we're going to spend most of our time here is in the configuration menu. Uh, the readout is really what we're going to get from the device information we can read from it but again we are offline uh, identification we can add some description protocol setting the Ethernet IP this is just really this this safety network number uh, we're not going to spend time there that's going to kind of take place behind the scenes we have to determine whether our application is stationary or mobile what language and what orientation we are mounting the scanner so we can change things like that so that the display will be configured accordingly uh, the monitoring plane, we get to do some configuration here as to what our resolution is, what our sampling is, uh, how fast uh, we, we want to be able to run our scanner. So some of that configuration happens here. I'm going to leave it at defaults now. And that's usually a good starting place unless your application has some specific requirements of which you'll have outlined in your functional specification. The real place to really start creating here is the fields. Here's where we define the different fields that we're going to be monitoring. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. I'm just scrolling using my mouse button so we can kind of get a feel for where our safe zone scanner is. Our field sets here, monitoring plane, we only really have one monitoring plane and we're, we can name this. So I'm going to have a safe one. That's going to be my field set. I'm going to call this also my individual field safe one. You can have a protective field, a warning field, or a contour where I have to actually see some edges. But in this case, I get to describe my protective field, my sampling, how often am I going to look at that area before I declare it uh, breached or not, and then also what resolution am I going to use for my area of monitoring. That's all selectable at the field set level. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a simple kind of radius layout for my monitoring zone. And I'm going to make this one safe here to the left. So that's going to be safe left. And I should probably name it something better, shouldn't I? So instead of just safe one, I'm going to call it safe and left front. And then is, and then I'm going to change the name of the one on the top too. So it makes sense to really name these accordingly to something that's going to make sense as you go to decode your program. So as the, there's different ways to lay this out. The most uh, flexible is just to have a field set for each of your different locations. So the next one I'm going to do is a safe right front. And then we're going to uh, add a field as well. So I can copy that name just to keep things going so I make sure that I type correctly or maybe I won't we'll go uh, safe right front as well and we'll make sure that that's a protective field two times the over sampling just the same and we'll expand that to the safe right so I'm going to again use that radius and go safe right approximately the same radius well different ways to to spin that around to adjust it and with a little practice you'll get a feel for exactly how the tool goes. There's different ways you can draw. This is, just happens to be one of them. Now I'm going to make two warning fields as well that are just going to be a little bit larger. So I'm going to do safe left left front and that way I could always add more if I would want to. And it's not safe, right? It's saying, hey, you already got one of those. So I'm just gonna make a warning left front. That's probably more what I wanted to do. And then in my warning front left, select warn left front. And this time I'm gonna make that a warning field, just keeping everything else the same. And as I make that field, you know, don't do that move that back I kind of moved off into the wrong area and do have an undo take that back take that back so as I'm making my warning you saw I dragged something I didn't want to I'm trying to draw my left warning field but I was able to use the undo buttons to get back to where I wanted to go and now I'm just gonna make a warning field a little bit larger than uh, what my safe field is and sometimes actually maximizing the window will help you get a better feel for the program and not be 
uh, you know, working in such a small space. So there's my left front. I'm going to then add a left, or excuse me, a right front. So my, my field set, we're going to call that warning warning right front and then for my field we can also call that warning right front and you can stack different fields but again I'm showing you the most flexible way that I've found for this is by making these entirely separate then when we start monitoring our different cases uh, we'll be able to select exactly what we want to see all nothing or and so there's no dependency on our warnings and our safety fields but you'll see how that works out here in a little while. So again, I'm just going to draw that as my warning field, very similar, just out to the front. So now I've got my field sets laid out. Inputs and outputs, we really aren't going to touch those because that's part of our SIP safety assembly. Those just come with us. But now we're going to build our monitoring cases. So I got a monitoring case table. We're going to use the input A and what, what we're going to allow them to do is we're going to have multiple monitor. We're going to have two monitoring cases. We're going to look left or look right for this application. So monitoring case, I'm just going to call this left, and I'm going to call this right. And what we're going to do, as far as just how we do that, is we're doing the one of n. So if a1 is selected, we're going to as an output to the scanner, we're going to select that. If A2, we're going to look at the right. So it's just going to be one or two. So now what we have to do is to find our cutoff path is what do we really want to look at in either of these situations. So I'm going to want to look at my safe left and I want to watch my warning left. So that's what I'm doing here on the left. And very similar on the right, I'm going to have a safe at the right and I got a warning at the right. And just to show you the flexibility of this, I'm gonna add one more monitoring case and we're gonna call that um, front safe. And with that's gonna come on, well, when we when we turn on our B1 input. So I had, to re I had to enable that to be used. And then I'm gonna say, hey, when B1's on, I'm gonna watch the safe front to the left and the safe front to the right. So no warnings and you can make all warnings and you can have multiple cases and more warning fields so you can very flexible but the point is that when uh, for example monitoring case one is selected then safe front will come out of this output one and cut off path two will come out the warning so we'll use we'll have to decode that in our code but those will, will be switchable switchable monitoring cases with our monitoring cases set up, one thing we can do is we can go to simulation and then just see, hey, based on our inputs, what are we going to monitor? So when A1 comes on, we're going to be watching to the left. A2 comes on, we're going to look to the right. When B1 comes on, we're going to go say front, and we know we haven't configured B2, so it really doesn't show anything. So it's just a good double check. Am I going to look at the areas I want? I look switching through those. That's really a all I've noted simulation is good for at this point. So what I'm going to do now, I got my field sets. I could review those if I want. Those are, have been developed. My monitoring cases are complete. So that's really all I'm going to do here offline. So I am going to apply my configuration. You'll notice that that configuration file is stored in a SDP file. That SDP is going to be required if I ever want to find that information again. So I have to have a connection or that available on the PC of which I'm going online. Otherwise I'll be able to upload it from the scanner once it's been downloaded. But note that that full configuration of those those zones and monitoring cases and everything we just saw in that development environment in the field set configurator is stored in this separate offline file. So I'm going to apply. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to save that the way it is. And now I'm going to be ready for a download to my processor.